what is XR? In recent years, people have been very excited about immersive video games you can play with head-mounted displays or that show digital objects on top of real things as part of the gameplay. These games allow us to interact with digital information visually and auditorily, but there is a wide variety of hardware and software they're built with. XR, or extended reality, is an umbrella term to designate all those technologies that make the virtual accessible. XR technologies have seen waves of interest and investment, but they seem to remain primarily used for specialized applications in gaming, training, some medical treatments, or construction. So what kinds of technologies does XR encompass at the moment, and what are the main differences? For now, the two main categories are AR and VR. AR stands for augmented reality, and it is already a relatively popular way of doing things. Pokemon Go, Google Glass, and TikTok are all products which allow people without vision impairments to see computer-generated items, things, or information on top of their usual environment. And what about VR? VR stands for virtual reality, and this is generally an immersive experience meant to replace the user's environment with a completely computer-generated one. Often, other people are also immersed in the same space and interacting with each other. For example, Facebook rebranded as Meta and tried to push a new version of its platform that people would meet through using virtual avatars. Is MR a mixture of AR and VR? Yeah. Mixed reality, or MR, is a crossover category where actions on digital objects have noticeable consequences in real life and vice versa. In that sense, it may combine hardware and software from both forms of extended reality technologies into a new mixed environment. This is a more recent term, and examples have not quite yet come to the mainstream. And so these ideas have been of interest to inventors and researchers for a long time? Yeah. Panorama rooms and early stereoscopes, which use different techniques to create the illusion of immersive 3D environments, were introduced in Europe as early as the late 18th century. In China, Panoramic hand scrolls had been painted since at least the 12th century. Skip to the 1950s with Morin Halig's Sensorama, which combines stereoscopy with fans, smell generators, stereo audio, and a mechanical chair to immerse his audience in short, multi-sensory films. It took some time for electronics to enable immersive, interactive video of some kind. But in 1987, the term virtual reality was coined, and things like VR pods started appearing in some North American malls. By 1993, Sega was attempting to market a VR headset for the Genesis console. In 2022, the global VR market is sometimes estimated to represent roughly $60 billion. So who knows what will be next with this level of interest? What can I do with XR at the Concordia Library? The technology sandbox on the second floor of the Webster Library has equipment like 3D scanners and headsets, as well as instructions on things like A-frame or tilt brush. The Visualization Studio also offers VR stations, as well as an extended linear display and a multi-channel audio system. As these technologies become more culturally relevant, these topics and tools will also become bigger parts of the media, film, arts, or education curriculums. So check the Concordia course catalog regularly and ask your faculty about these topics.